Fade in. Interior. Studio apartment. Night. John O'Connell, 57, stares forward in only boxer shorts. A chow mein noodle falls from his scraggly gray beard below his unkempt hair. Wrinkles squint down at ones on his Anglo body. The dingy walls were created about the time he was. Muffled squabbles echo through those same walls. A tiny television sits on a cardboard box that flickers to a Zumba infomercial. A digital clock shows 1.13 a.m. John chugs straight from the half-empty Smirnoff vodka bottle. He gets up and goes over to a table. A restraining order sits next to some other court papers. As if to mock him, the words custody denied stamped in red stare back up at him. He picks up a thirty-eight pistol next to the Chinese food on the table. John sways back and forth. He is so drunk. He stumbles. His eyes tear up as he glares at a photo of himself, a smiling woman with her arm around him, and a young boy and girl about ten years old, obviously in happier times. He focuses on the boy and girl, wobbles as he kisses it. Love you too. John shuts off the TV. The room is dark except for light shining in from a street light. He slumps down on the sofa. He sticks the gun into his mouth, clicks back the hammer. Interior, John's apartment, morning. A cell phone vibrates next to an open hand on the dingy sofa. The phone falls to the floor from the vibrations. Silence. The morning sunlight shines through the open window. The cell phone vibrates again, and again, relentless. The hand doesn't move. The phone vibrates again. The wrinkled fingers slowly move. Fade to black.